Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. I'm the Total Connector. My name is Kevin Davani. Um, well, I'm really excited. Looking forward to my next panel discussion with Alex Svetsky, Stephanie von Jan, and of course um, the legendary Hess McCook. And we're gonna talk about yeah a spectrum of topics, which is more than overdue and urgent, like never before. In times of these, of all these, whatever, coronavirus, pandemic, uh, hysteria, fear-mongering, and really uh, the incapability to do some reality checks. So in this acceleration, in this acceleration of, um, you know, suppression, oppression, uh, censorship, uh, transhumanism, uh, tracking, surveillance, uh, authoritarian Orwellian nightmares going on. So we're going to talk about all these agendas, you know, technology, uh, surveillance, censorship, uh, the dystopian future, elimination of basic human rights and, you know, and, but freedom. Um, discussion on the percentage of people are buying blindly and those questioning um, what is going on, but still acquiescing and those act actively fighting truth. Uh, why a minority may shift the direction around. That's usually 5 to 10% rule uh, in average. And questioning whether the government really has the interest of the elderly, you know, of the real people in need in mind. So, yeah, and we're going to talk about, you know, spirituality and, and you yeah, know, consciousness and knowledge, comprehension and, and, and uh, uh, inspiration, courage. The necessity to face all, you know, dark truths, the reality, the pain, in order to create something new that benefits humanity on an individual level and global level, etc. Money printing, of course, inflation, hyperinflation, the, the trillions and trillions, brrr, um, and uh, you know the difference between symptomatic and um, and and uh, and the cause, uh, you know, cause-oriented solutions. Um, yeah, universal basic income, hyperinflation, uh, unemployment, and of course, yeah, the essence of all, Bitcoin, the monetary root layering, and of course, about citadels. All right, without further ado, this is my panel discussion. Have fun, and please uh, let me know what you think. All right, welcome to my show, the Total Bitcoin Show. Um, well, I have... Uh, a panel of very special guests. Um, let me start with Stephanie von Jan in Berlin, uh, Hess McCook in Australia, and Alexander Svetsky. Alex Svetsky, he's originally from Australia too, but he's somewhere else, and me sitting in <laughs> Austria. <laughs> so really my pleasure to have you back, uh, especially Stephanie is, I think it's your first time, right, on my show? Well, the panel, the other panel that you had, that, that kind of side event, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, with uh, with Sven and uh, Ben Kaufman. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for your time, guys. We want to talk about, uh, yeah, pretty much everything that's going on. Because let me kick this off, because I just heard um, an interview or sort of a, a video from a pretty, uh, you know, cool investigative journalist in Germany. Uh, it's really bad. I mean, uh, sometimes I'm asking myself, how how bad does it have to be to to you know um, to to get people uh, really get into civil disobedience? Because now Saxon part of Germany wants to put people who object or you know refuse uh, the quarantine or lockdown uh, to put them into a mental asylum, a, a psychiatric clinic. Um, Fuck, that's what. I'll be I'll be there in a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm surprised you're not there already. <laughs> maybe maybe I am. That's why I don't want this video. <laughs> so it's really getting bad, and um, I don't know. I think if people want to know what it feels like, like subtly uh, in the 30s or 1933 in Germany, where people you know, uh, started denouncing their neighbors, their friends, uh, and now with, uh, you know, with the high tech coming up, with uh, apps uh, uh, and, 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 you know, integrated into this uh, uh, or, or man being become mandatory into the smartphones. So 
what 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 kind of future do you do you foresee now with with all these things going on um and and to be honest with you, I mean in germany is, if it's true it's like 0 0.3 0.37% uh, mortality rate with this corona shit going on so um this is uh you know dramatically out of proportion uh, what is your take on this? I mean, maybe we want to start with Stephanie because since you, you, since you uh, live in Berlin, Germany, mm -hmm, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the future that they're pushing for is kind of a transhumanism future that eliminates uh, essentially everything that makes us human. So in a way, we can imagine this, that we, they want us to, to get chipped, right? Um, Gates already planned some kind of vaccinations that have a microchip already embedded. And then you're like always surveilled and also your like bodily function can be surveilled. And um, while going even further, they want to kind of connect the human being to an AI infrastructure. So this is actually a complete mind control. And we know that because they were like literally saying that. It was someone from Google saying that, that by 2030, we are like all connected to an AI brain. And then we are not human beings anymore that are self-sovereign, or at least partially. We completely lost our, our um, self-sovereignty and uh, independence. And you know, um, when seeing where this all is going to, we really have to like get up and to resist and disobey this, because otherwise it's going into this direction. And um, so to say okay uh, now i don't get up because i don't want to go to a psychiatry i mean the other solution is that you are kind of totally mind controlled and this is probably even worse so actually we don't have a solution but many people don't know where this is going to but if you don't do your research you see the agenda that is playing out and i think um this is absolutely crucial that the people are seeing this more and more and I see that more and more people are waking up and this is so important and so we see it really depends on the people on whether they disobey or how many will do it and when they will do it and this will eventually determine how far they can push this agenda this anti-human agenda which it is no. Reminds me of uh, something straight out of Westworld. I don't know if you guys uh, watch uh, Westworld. Uh, do you, I watched do you a few Stephanie? episodes back in the day. Watched a few episodes uh, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, uh, uh, this season, season three, they've got a huge AI called Rehoboam, and uh, it basically uh, sets everyone's uh, destiny uh, within, like, using AI and you live based on the path this big ai uh, creates for you mm -hmm. so, 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 sounds uh, efficient <laughs> oh yeah oh super efficient <laughs> but, but but you know that's that's set in the in the 2060s uh, uh -huh. but look uh -huh. in terms of uh, you know rising up and uh, and you know rebelling and all that i see very very little uh, social resistance to any of this unfortunately uh, some people would probably even volunteer to be to be chipped. I know some people have uh, have done their own chipping, uh, so they can use uh, you know, uh, tap and pay. So, yeah, that was uh, that monkey in um in Scandinavia somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, was, yeah. So, I, I saw it all over the place. Uh, so depending on how well uh, you know the powers that be market the chip, I think uh, I think uh, this will pass through with only only limited resistance. And the people that resist uh, are probably the, all the people we know, plus a plus a couple of plus a couple of the others. Uh, I don't know if the regular populace uh, has it in them. Unfortunately, Hus, I think you're right, mate. So, um, hence why we need to um, find a place which has a lake, some mountains, so we can't get blanked, and um, yeah. build some walls. <laughs> this is yeah, a citadel this, this is the plan. Yeah, a breakaway yeah. civilization. I mean, I see no other solution. Do you see an effective solution to this? We need a breakaway civilization. Because what are you going to do about the executive branch? Because it's always been in history. They've always obeyed orders. I mean, they're, never, they're probably not going to go into civil disobedience if they know this is wrong. It's a wrong thing, you know? Like, 
uh, you know, prohibiting congregation of people or going into the park or shooting at people or I don't know, uh, all kinds of shit going on. So yeah, it, it's it's a tough one, man. So so I just had a um I just had a fucking citizen Karen um argument just before I got on this fucking podcast, right? So I was outside in a park completely by my fucking self like no one anywhere um and there's like this little um kind of like one of those you know children's like monkey bar kind of things and you know i've been going there every day to do you know, chin-ups and a bit of a workout and shit like that because all the gyms are closed and um and the other day some old you know guy comes up to me and he starts fucking talking to me in german and i'm like man, shut the fuck up. And he, like, I could tell he's telling me to like leave. And I was like, shut the fuck up. So I put my um, earphones back on. I ignored him and I just kept, you know, training. Um, and he just st stood there fucking, you know, shouting at me for about 10 minutes until he got tired of shouting and he walked off. But, um, you know, clearly he's alerted the neighbors because a couple of days later, which is today, I was out there again this morning and, um, and doing some training and some other old fucking elderly lady comes up to me and this one could speak English. So I couldn't pull my whole, i oh, sorry. I can't understand you. I mean, I tried my other language, <laughs> but she was like, oh, I know you speak English. I was like, fuck. <laughs> and, um, but you know, to, to Haas's point, like the, th these idiots still exist. Like and it kind of made me really angry. It's because, you know, a big part of why the world is so dumb, blind and complacent is because, you know, these, the, the last generation or two, um, has basically become, you know, out of complacency and greed and their own, you know, desire for comfort, having given two fucks about what comes after them. Um, and now we, the, the generation that's coming up, need to, um, you know, effectively pay for their sins, um, or we're going to have to kick the can down the road for our children and their children's children to pay for our fucking stupidity. And, um, and at some point, like, you know, some generations got to be, you know, ballsy enough to either break the cycle or, or the whole thing's going to implode on itself anyway. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but they're the kind of idiots like the, the, that old lady that I dealt with today who will be the ones who push for, uh, chip me please. Um, or, you know, this man is breaking the law because he's, you know, fucking doing some chin ups in a park. Ah, oh, anyway. So here in Berlin, um, this is kind of, let's say, the center of Germany of disobedience. Um, mm -hmm. And the parks are completely full. <laughs> so this is already really good. Um, and here's a protest every Saturday and people are coming. It's like not thousands, but a few hundred are coming. So, um, and they're like, you find news, like, like papers where people say okay we cannot like do this so here is a movement and there has always been actually we really had like fights in the streets between police and the people really? when they were just like um when they didn't go out of a house that they didn't own you know so so there is this uh, mentality is quite strong here in berlin i fucking um, love it which, which 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 park are they congregating in which part like, whereabouts which which kind of parks is it like um like near the tea garden or is it like sort of central where where is it uh hasenheide and tempelhofer fell oh really in the temple oh, okay yeah it's completely full <laughs> fuck yes okay cool <laughs> well, but I see i'm also quite happy <laughs> i'm quite happy that i'm <laughs> leading the, right the gang <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Not, don't fuck it up like alex place. we want to have you back you know don't fuck it up you know don't hey man, I'm 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 gonna put my Hong Kong protester gear on. <laughs> I'll be like, I've <laughs> I've arrived. Sletsky's <laughs> here. So, let's let's talk about something positive, dudes. Um, um, Stephanie had a really great topic. Um, how does the United States export inflation? Do you want to kick it off? Ah, yeah. So. Um, since the United States is printing more and more money, um, their currency eventually devalues. And uh, when you have other uh, countries that um, want to um, export something or import from the United States, this, this uh, currency devaluation influences this. So if the US dollar is devalued, the United States citizens cannot so easily buy um, 
goods and services uh, from other countries. And this is why these other countries would need to devalue their currency as well in order that the citizens from the United States can still buy the products from abroad. And this is kind of this argument why the, why the United States exports inflations to other countries and everyone has to print more money. So it equals out um, in relation to the United States dollar. Yeah, me and, yeah. personally, uh, yeah, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, uh, I just wanted to say what, what I'm trying to understand. Okay, the, the United States dollar is, the US dollar is the dominant international reserve currency. Now, with all this quantitative easing, you know, in the trillions and trillions uh, being uh, whatever printed or digitally generated or whatever, you know, the, the, the debt expanded, I want to know the process. Like, what's this? What, what is it? Because we know, I, I'm pretty sure the euro is, if, it's, if there's a currency, the euro is going to crash first. So I will, do you see like a path to that? Like how, what kind of consequences or impacts that would have on the eurozone? Uh, like how fast it would, because uh, it's just a question of time. It's not a question of if, but whether, uh, but when, you know, like the banks are already insolvent in Germany. So, uh, and the year is going to crash. I mean, that's, that's for sure. It just, it just, uh, you know, and then of course, I want to know the impact, like from your perspective, what, how fast is this going to be like a gradual suddenly th thing for Bitcoin? Or do you see the like in, 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 in portions coming, in tranches? Is, who's that who's answering this? Um, so right. I'm actually just uh, figuring out or trying to find um, a timeline of Marcos Krall on that, which was very uh, enlightening, but I haven't found it yet. Um, so basically, he said that we have different stages. First, we have a deflationary phase, which happened. Um, so the euro or the US dollar was increased in value because the stock prices went down. Everyone needed to get the, the dollars or the fiat currency in order to pay their debt. So first we had this inflationary um, um, tendency. Then we have uh, banks going bust and then more and more banks going bust. Then we have an inflationary phase and then we have eventually the crash because the money is just getting less worth and since they're printing like crazy of course the currency devaluates and this is where they will probably introduce uh, central bank digital currencies and then the good side is that the people learn how to use a wallet and to go digital and then they can also easily use bitcoin but on the other side they will push okay uh, bitcoin is not secure because it's not <laughs> May, they will probably push because it's not backed by a government, but then maybe could say many could say, okay, I'm tr not trusting the government, so maybe Bitcoin is good. But on the other side, they cannot just merely prohibit it because of AML, which is also again ridiculous, because we have seen that um, a lot of money laundering is taking place in the fiat system actually, and also they have put so many uh, measures against that. Oh, there's still like 99% is uh, not found, so it's absolutely ridiculous. But they will push this and we know that we have so much propaganda and brainwashing going on on the media so many people will follow that and this is again where we see what the people will do every individual so yeah i don't i don't have faith in the individual so i'll give you a, i'll give you a on the ground action from my uh, from my home country so uh, my sister's there now but i grew up there it's uh, lebanon so Lebanon has run out of paper dollar. So uh, there's been capital controls in Lebanon for like months and months and months. So it probably started four months ago. It was a uh, maximum a thousand USD a week. Then it went to 400 a week, 200, uh, 100. Uh, but for the past two weeks, it's because there is literally no more paper cash in Lebanon and the airport is closed on account of Corona. <laughs> so a month ago, uh, the central bank defaulted, the government defaulted, and the retail banks are like on the verge of default. 40% uh, of the population is now below the poverty line, which is uh, defined as $5 USD a day. 
every single politician in the country is a billionaire. No one's donated a cent. Uh, yeah, literally, people are going hungry, and no one's <laughs> no one stood up and made a fuss. Wow. Uh, so I don't, I don't have, and like everybody is armed in Lebanon after the civil war. So everyone's got guns, militias everywhere. So maybe it has to be 80% of the population below the poverty line uh, to make a stink up. Now on the other end, on the other side, uh, no one's going to make a, a stink if they're on UBI. Yeah, U UBI is a good and, little And UBI, UBI <laughs> is, is looking likely at this point in a lot of places. Yeah. So the, the genie's out of the bottle. Now that they've known that they can print money, that, that's it. The, 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 the hammer is out of the toolbox and they'll keep using it. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's the, the building of the, the parallel system, uh, which is, which is the Bitcoin uh, system and, and uh, way of thought and ideology. Uh, and it'll, it'll just, uh, it'll have to be a migration from the old system, uh, into the new system. Uh, and, and to that, in terms of, you know, coming in, in tranches, I think it will be, uh, in tranches, uh, Buy now or buy later is uh, what I always say. Uh, but in the end, you're going to have to buy. Well, uh, what are you uh, specifically saying? Buy uh, Bitcoin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so, yeah. so, Touché. so buy it now or buy it later. In the end, you're going to, you're going to, you are literally going to have to yeah. buy. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, there's, um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take this into a, <clears throat> a, a, a slightly, off kilter direction, if you don't mind, Kev, is that all right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I just finished, so I've read four books this week. Oh, sorry, not this week. Um, fuck, I'm, I'm not that much of a machine. Um, this month. <laughs> um, and two have been absolutely fucking atrocious. So for anyone listening to this, stay away from Noam Chomsky's work. The guy's a fucking moron. <laughs> yeah, I already read um, that. <laughs> Your tweet. Jesus <laughs> Christ, what an idiot. Um, mm -hmm. so that, and then also Robert Greene, I don't know if anyone's ever done the whole, you know, the 48 laws of power and all that shit. The guy, the guy's a monkey as well. Like the, he just draws these moronic fucking pseudoscientific conclusions. He's got some good anecdotal stories in there. So that's kind of why I've, you know, stuck through the book, but, um, like it's mostly dog shit, but there was two good books that I read. One of them was about Theranos, which was, um, uh, which was really great. And it just goes to show like how, um, stuff breaks down um, from within when you're running, like when, when you're running a show with no substance, uh, inside, um, and no matter how much, you know, capital you've got swirling around at some point, um, you know, the show fucking breaks down because you can't, uh, physically control, um, you know, every element of it, but particularly when you're a little bit incompetent. So, you know, granted there was, um, quite a bit of incompetence going on around Theranos, but it, it made me think about, you know, uh, more, you know that, that that made me think think of it as a micro representation of a you know of a macro organization being something like government or central banking you know being full of uh, individuals who inherently are you know bumbling fools at some point in time um, who will you know do things that fuck up um, so, so that's sort of one little anecdote which I'll touch on in a second but the the final book and I just finished it last night is called One Second After. And it's, um, it's kind of like a, it's a fictional sci-fi book uh, written by, um, you know, some ex-military guy. Um, and w what it is, it's basically a story of uh, what happens from, you know, one second after um, a set of EMPs um, knock out every electronic component in America. Um, and, you know, it, he, like, it goes into detail like you know day one day two day three day four day eight day 13 day 30 um and, and each chapter sort of takes it out uh, you know over a year and it just shows how fragile um you know the infrastructure is uh and how dependent it is on um on you know modern day electronics and supply chains and um you know just how interconnected and really stretched every bit of uh, infrastructure we have in the modern world um, actually is. And I, I think, you know, whilst the risk of things like, you know, microchips and all this sort of stuff um, rises, also the, 
the, the cost of attack is um is getting lower and lower and lower so whilst you know i i do think you know there's a big chance that you know we move into a more dystopian future and stuff like that that those dystopian futures inherently have massive uh you know points of uh cascading failure where um where they'll they'll ultimately send themselves to a you know to a big fucking uh, stop, for example, they'll, they'll blow themselves up at some point in time. Um, and if we kind of mix the, the, the Theranos lesson, which is at some point in time, you know, we realize the emperor's got no clothes. Um, and we mix the lesson of the fragility from a, from a fictional story, like one second after you realize that, you know, whilst these big, scary, you know, governments who want to chip us and everything seem to be, you know, uh, all seeing, um, and all knowing and all controlling, they, they really are held together, you know, with, you know, band-aids and fucking duct tape. Um, and you know, they can only kick the can down the road for so long. Now it's, it's, it's more in my mind, just a question of, um, of, you know, when things break down and without sounding like a complete doomsday fucking nutcase which i feel like i'm becoming more of um you know I, I i personally think that we'll come out of corona you know at some point you know once people realize that it's not as bad as it was or once we realize that probably more people than we thought had corona in the first place um and just you know built up antibodies to it or whatever um i'm sort of a little bit more in that camp but um you know as we as society sort of starts to mend itself and put itself back together, I think, um, you know, the, you know, the, the chipping and all that sort of stuff and you know, the extra surveillance is going to be something that happens, but it's going to introduce new fragilities and new, um, potential weaknesses, um, in the system. And yeah, I think some of us are going to be lucky enough to realize that a little bit sooner and try and set ourselves up so that we're not as dependent on a um on a system that is inherently uh bound to blow up in everyone's face but um anyway i'm kind of going off on tangents now but i just felt those two books for me were like really helpful in giving me um some perspective about you know the current situation being a a precursor to something else and an opportunity mm -hmm. to sharpen the mind sharpen the skills and you know continue building a level of um self-sufficiency that i think is going to become more and more important down the track yeah actually um this also opens up opportunity to see that we're like not at all dependent on them because we see that they're like doing so many wrong decisions and mm -hmm. they were kind of actually wrong with everything and so many like people from all that were not like scientific experts came up with incredible data analy analysis and so we can see, okay, we people can think as well, and we can also come up with solutions. For example, those that made up the um, the breathing things with the mm -hmm. printing and the scuba, you know, that was just coming from the people. So we can invent things. We can think um, critically. We don't need a government that says what we need to do. We can decentrally organize. And I think this is also one of the great things that's coming now. And what I also see is that now, this kind of control structure is becoming more visible. Before that, <laughs> we had kind of a control structure made of by law, so I cannot like easily go to a place of land and build my house because I need to apply, I have to buy it first with in incredible prices. So this was kind of like a hidden control structure, also like the financial system is actually a control structure. Mm -hmm. because money is like shifted from the poor on the middle class to the super rich. Um, and this was not so visible for the average person, but now it's becoming like so in your face with all these totalitarian means. And I do see that many people are like, okay, wow, what is happening now? And they're like kind of real realizing that they were betrayed so often, but now it's like really visible. So it brings many opportunities as well. Yeah, there's a big divergence. So it's it's really interesting to see. And I think it's been um, interesting to see it happening on Twitter in a micro sort of fashion is there's this divergence where 
you've got some people who are really pushing to kind of the side that we're on, which is self-sufficiency, which is printing these masks themselves, which is, you know, coming over to Bitcoin, like the amount of people that I've had to like starting to message me about, oh, you know, I heard you on a podcast or now I know what you've been saying about Bitcoin all this time. And also, so there is definitely a movement on our side. Um, but likewise, sort of on what Haas mentioned is that there's definitely, and like the, the fucking old lady who came and chastised me today, like there's definitely the Karens and the fucking sheep of the world, which, which I would agree with Haas is probably the majority, or not probably, but definitely the majority, um, that are moving like, you know, sheep to the slaughter into that direction. And there's the, like, the, there's, there's such a, there's such a polarity um, in those two mindsets, but at the same time, like, you know, th their tool is, um, you know, the, the tool of central banking, central control, central management, et cetera. And our tool is the one of, um, you know, we've got Bitcoin number one. So we now finally have a fucking economic tool so that those who want to be self-sufficient actually have a mechanism via which to do that. Um, and you know, we, we're just going to need to build up the toolkit a little bit more. So we're going to need to think about, um, you know, food, we're going to need to think about defense. We need to think about all this sort of stuff, but there's a massive, it's, it's just crazy to see the world like live action role play. Um, this divergence between these two philosophies of, um, of thought. And yeah, I think, you know, obviously the minority is with us, but I think we are a far more stubborn minority and far more capable and functional minority. Um, so, so I do have faith that there's a, um, there's a way that you know we can i don't know I, I don't i don't really know what it looks like i don't know if it's citadels or if it's you know pockets of um you know different thinkers inside these homogenous lumps of you know centrally managed shit where you know we we're able to communicate and you know resist but um it's it's just the, the world is um you know corona's given us an opportunity to see who actually is willing to um, stand for freedom or sell it for some notion of safety. That's the um, precipice. Exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. That's the precipice. You know, what I find scary Alex, is the degree of censorship and the degree of incapability to question the official narratives, whatever that yeah. is, yeah. whether it be the Corona, yeah. the testing procedure, you know, because there are so many experts out there like Dr. I mean, I listened quite often now to this Dr. Shiva, who, by the way, is running for, for the Senate. Uh, that's the only guy I would, you know, say he could, you know, really uh, have an effect, have an impact on, on the consciousness, on, the, uh, you know, on the, on the whole structural uh, thing. Well, because he really stands for truth, freedom and health. He, he himself, uh, you know, highly, you know, this guy, Dr. Shiva Ayadani. I've, I've seen some of his stuff, yeah, but you I should like, really I was... watch his videos. He makes so much sense. He says, you know, it's an immune deficiency. You got to strengthen your immune system. You know I mean? It's like, okay, maybe it's a severe f uh, f sort of, a, whether it's bioengineer or natural or bad shit, you know, because of whatever wild animal eating, it doesn't matter, but it's, it's, we got to strengthen our immune system and it makes so much sense what he says, you know, and that's what makes me so sad. You know, that people don't question even the narratives. Yeah. Well, I mean, luckily some of us do. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I would actually divide it between the people that are like completely sleeping and completely obeying. Then you have uh, the people like in between who don't really see the truth, but are already realize, okay, something is like weird. And you know, this is also a spectrum. And then you have the people who really see like all these lies and uh, we're digging deep and all these like rabbit holes. And there, of course, you also have a spectrum and are really like fighting for the truth and for freedom and putting out this content. And mm -hmm. um, while we are the minority right now, I would say so definitely, but um, we are bringing this content out. So we're bringing to this content to like this big mass who is like already thinking, okay, something is wrong, but I don't know exactly what it is. And also you're saying this, it doesn't really like fit yet, but you know, it's like crumbling. The whole view of reality is crumbling. And I think there more and more will come and see the truth and step by step go into the rabbit holes. And yeah, so we don't need that everyone is um, like True. 
so extremely like us uh, bringing this whole forward even if it's just like 10 percent or even five percent we can definitely make a difference Critical. and you know they cannot put 10 percent into a prison so we can no, really stop some things of happening even if we're the minority yeah so 10 percent level is what uh, is called the intolerant uh, minority that uh, they can they can flex and get whatever they want mm -hmm. so one of the, like uh, one of the like the, the great examples uh, of uh, of like this case is uh, is kosher eaters mm. i was waiting for that cool. yeah, so, so th this is this is the example they always use so everybody is allowed to you know eat kosher mm -hmm. uh, but there's 10% that can only eat kosher. Mm -hmm. So if you make everything kosher, everyone's happy, even yep. though there's only you know 10% of that market uh, that wants it. So I think, yeah, 10% is the tipping point. We get 10% of the world uh, on board uh, to, to Bitcoin. I know k likes to call that critical adoption. Maybe and it's yeah, 5%, 10, maybe it's 5%. It could be, who knows? it could who knows? be 5%, but yeah, yeah. Th those, those are the numbers. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't take a, a a huge, uh, tightly knit group to to make a to make a difference. So uh, I totally agree with you there, Steph. Five to ten percent get get them on board, and uh, it's uh, it's smooth sailing. But five to ten percent is still a big number. Mm -hmm. well, well, but I have to say, um, when I look at these more critical like news, like Kenneth M, for example, in Germany. Um, like one of the video has 100,000 views and also other more critical things that have like so, so many views. So, so we are quite a percentage. Yeah. Look, the, the alt media is starting to get bigger and bigger. Uh, there's been a huge purge oh. over the last two weeks of YouTube channels. Uh, you know, they, some people had a, a little too much to think mm -hmm. and uh, YouTube got rid of them. So look, they're actively working on on it, not on us people like us not succeeding. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's something of nightmares to to these people to have a a conscientious, active, skeptical citizenry. Yeah, which makes them like really suspicious. Actually, I know that like some mainstream media said, okay, like there's so many like conspiracy or alternative news out there, and uh, it's just untrue without like you know playing out arguments. And you know, if I'm even reading this in the mainstream media, I would think, okay, why are they just like pushing against that without any argument or something? So yeah, it could um, them covering this in a, such a negative way become makes it suspicious. So I think also here more and more people are thinking, okay, something is weird. <laughs> to use to use the cliche, the mainstream media are the enemies of the people. Oh. Uh, they they a lot of the like uh, the the sheep driving narratives uh, come straight out of the mainstream media, yeah. and. Uh, and you know, breaking the conditioning on people to you know get them to stop listening to mainstream media uh, is a is a big challenge. So the, the the fact that you know CNN has any credibility whatsoever uh, is amazing to me. But you know, I'm guessing their ratings are still as uh, high as ever. It's um it's because of that Mad Money show, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, I love Jim Cramer. <laughs> Bitcoin peddler. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't gotten into the shit coins yet. Oh, I know, right? Bye, I know. bye, He's bye, bye, the, bye. Give me the perfect fucking shit coin proponent. Holy shit. Yeah, I know. They should have had him oh. on BitConnect. Yeah, they, they, they should they should have really. What's the what's the latest scam in the crypto world these days? I is there know, one or man, is it a I'm... quiet time for scams? Are you still being invited? I think Alex, it's a quiet to, time to for Bitcoin scams. Conferences, like. <laughs> uh, I, I've been invited to a couple, like some blockchain event in Austin, yeah. and this and that. And they're like, "What would you like to talk about?" I was like, "Well, I'll talk about how blockchain's a scam." They're like, "Oh, look, this is a blockchain event. I'm not sure you can talk about that." I said, "Well, fuck off then." Um, I don't know, man. Look, it, it has luckily it has quietened down. I think one of the good things about all this shit is like I've I've heard nothing about transgenders i've heard very little about greta i've heard very little about 
shitcoin this and crypto that and blockchain this and fucking whatever other stupidity. So this, this is one amazing silver lining about this whole um, situation is that for a lot less of, um, you know, that other noise that we're, you know, spending our time consuming ourselves with, but I, I could be wrong. I mean, I, I don't, well, uh, you're not hearing from Greta because, like, Consume Greta's and fair- mainstream media. No, no, because like she's fairly happy at the moment. Like uh, emissions are down, and uh, her <laughs> dream of her dream of shutting down the fossil fuel industry. Uh, How dare well, you? Well, well, we've got a demo of what the world will look like when you shut down uh, energy and industry. It doesn't really look very good. Uh, yeah. So yeah, maybe we can get her to to reevaluate her position after all of this. She's got some noble uh, positions in theory. Uh, but yeah, we'll just we'll see if she uh, she uses this time as a time to grow because because uh, she does have some some noble uh, intentions in theory. She just doesn't know how to solve the problem yet, yeah. and uh, she'll get there. Hopefully, it's easy. Uh, yeah. It's easy. Well, the, the the solution it starts with a B and uh, and uh, rhymes with the Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but she needs the right, you know, the right influence, you know, <laughs> because she's also surrounded genius. by morons, you know. I mean, people, you know, even her parents. I think uh, she's just being brainwashed. Yeah, she's just a kid. Like and yeah. fucking yeah. Because the reality of it is like. Uh, like the thing that's damaging like the planet is like our our crack like addiction to plastic chinese garbage yeah and, that, uh, that it's, can it's only really it's be blind consumption yeah. man it's uh, it's fiat it's it's mostly like fiat disease consumption so if that's you can a, yeah. fix fiat disease uh, you will go a very long way to 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 fixing the environmental issues absolutely the, you know but you just fucking nailed it there, bro. It's that that's like I, I was um the the biggest disease on the planet is just, you know, like it's a mixture of blind consumption and um like th- that that's actually the, the core of why Bitcoin fixes this. You know, like people think that it's a you know, a, a some fanciful notion that somehow Bitcoin fixes everything, but 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 it's actually functionally true. Like it, it you know, you you solve for one piece in um in that equation and the um and the ripple effects start to change everything else around it particularly that uh fiat consumption blind fucking excess uh junky style you know next hit that we're looking for in fact i've i've just finished writing an article well, i actually just finished i finished it 2 weeks ago but i'm still waiting on um a publication to publish it fucking wankers but um it's called uh it's called the harv. It's 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 about the halving, but it's a phil- philosophical. So I don't talk about you know stock to flow and prices. I don't give a shit about any of that. Like what I talk about is how symbolic the halving is in a world that is consistent consistently chasing the next hit, more, 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 my exponentials, um, you know, growth and like at, at whatever cost, you know, it doesn't matter versus the one thing in the world that is hardening and becoming more scarce and actually halving it, it's such a it's such a 180 degree uh you know move away from the madness of the fucking world it's such a symbolic moment um mm-hmm. you know and and what bitcoin and the halving represents is just completely completely contrarian to um to the madness that the you know that's taken over the world with this um it, like you said, fiat, fucking cheap, consumptive, you know, chase for the next hit. Um, and, a high time and a high that's time difference. And a high time difference, Alex. That, you know, I mean, it forces people to, you know, be, we can't even stand still, you know, to think, to question, to evolve, to innovate, to develop. You know, this it's it's a totally different civilization. It's I think fiat really fucked up our civilization, you know? It's yeah. I mean, I mean, it's and it, when you say fiat, I, I really just want to be clear that it's not just fiat money. I think fiat money is also a um, a function of fiat mentality and fiat mm-hmm. mentality just being um, uh, trading trading tomorrow for now, which comes back to time preference. Is um, you know, we've we've all become so we, we've all become junkies, um, and, and not all of us, obviously, but you know, pr- predominantly the world's become. Just, just the, you know, a, 
a macro representation of you know a junkie who doesn't you know who who wants now to feel good and will continue at all costs um, to continue to try and make now feel good and to avoid pain. I mean, when I was on that podcast with um, Peter McCormack the other week, you know, I was trying to, to talk about how, you know, even the reaction to Corona is also a fiat reaction, which is the world and everyone in it is so afraid of a little bit of pain that, um, that will, will make knee jerk reactions without fucking thinking just to look like we're either doing something or to try and preserve some you know some idea of oh you know the the you know the essential structures that we like we're just so every every time a crisis or so-called crisis or or something um quote unquote negative appears we have to stamp it out we have to kill it we have to vaccinate it we have to sterilize it we have to fucking destroy it like it's all in the name of um avoiding pain and when you when you build any system where um, you remove pain from the system, you actually remove the, the, the feedback mechanism via which the system can correct itself. So what you do is you veer completely off fucking course. And that's what we've been doing for, for God knows how long now is we've completely veered off course. We have no mechanism via which to, um, to know whether we're on the right course or not because we've moved the pain receptors. Like, you know, and, and the analogy that I was trying to give to Pete McCormack is, you know, when you put your hand on a stove, you feel pain so that, you know, it, that's the body's way of telling you that that's a bad thing to do and you're going to do damage and potentially kill yourself. Now, when you remove all of those receptors, you know, through drugging yourself, um, you know, whether on a micro level or drugging yourself through, you know, capital injections, you know, blind fucking liquidity injections, fiat money, um, you know, vaccination, like blind fucking shoot everything down that might cause some fucking pain. You, you remove yourself from... Uh, any natural order and any natural rebalancing Mm -hmm. um and yeah again sadly that can only go on for so long um, until somebody has to pay for it and we're all just sort of gambling with which generation is going to pay for it now i don't know if it's going to be us whether it's going to be the next generation or whether it's going to be the generation after that but yeah unfortunately someone's gonna have to pay the piper and luckily for some of us we've managed to um to figure out that there's a way to ensure that, you know, we don't necessarily have to pay for it, you know, from our, from our own hard earned wealth. I, you know, by storing that wealth in something like Bitcoin, but anyway, that's my rant over. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing how you put like this micro perspective to the macro perspective. Um, Yeah. Really, really, really great. So actually, when you see it on yourself and you have like depression or fear, or whatever, then you get like the pills that numbs it down. And yeah, it's that's like it. yeah. still there subconsciously. And you're Correct. You haven't, you haven't dealt with it. Yeah, it's, it's the no. difference between causal thinking and symptomatic thinking. And, and that's the root of the problem here. It's, we don't deal with any causes. We just cover up the symptoms. Um, and we continue to do that. And, you know, at some point in time, like, and this is, this is what I talk about, like the hollowing out of, of something. And this, this actually ties back into what I mentioned about Theranos earlier is all they did was they covered up every fucking symptom, every problem that they had with their company, with another story, with another capital raise, with, you know, with another, you know, bullshit crony that they got working for them or with another director, or another advisor to make it look good. Whereas the inside just decayed, they just hollowed themselves out. And that's exactly what's happening in society, in communities, and in most people today. Um, so yes, thank, thank you for picking up on that. Yeah. So what you really have to do is to make it like better. You have to go through all the darkness, all the shadow, all mm-hmm. the yeah. really uh, get to the problem, know what did I wrong or what did the others do wrong. And then you can like create it new and make a better version of that. Exactly. That creates, uh, or, or that requires a lot of honesty with yourself and a lot of like strength and, you know, um, patience and yeah, stability it, to go through all that, all that shit it, actually. It, it requires, I think, what we're missing most in the world today, which is courage. Yes. I think, I think if there's one thing, like I, I used to, I, I did a lot of personal development stuff when I was younger and, you know, my, I, I had a, I had a word which I, you know, carried around with me always. And that, that word, it was like sort of what I called my power virtue, which is, uh, I think courage is the most, one of the most important virtues um, 
in life and and it you know courage is required when you want to be a contrarian courage is required when you want to be honest with yourself it's required when you want to um you know do the right thing um it's required um you know to be a protector to be a leader it's required to um you know it's required when you need to go through a bit of pain it's required to face fears it's it's such an important virtue and it's just i think it's the it's the thing that's most um lacking in the world today um yeah and it's a uh, yeah courage oh, uh, courage uh courage can be inspired uh, by by leaders as well it's been a very very long time since yeah. since that's been the truth but in terms of courage and in terms of having you know to take a hit uh grit your teeth and all of that kind of stuff i will uh, uh a lot of the leaders are calling this a war so trump calls this the war against the invisible enemy <laughs> so world war 2 allied powers 16 million military dead axis powers 8 million military dead so if i was a leader at the moment uh i'd uh, i'd write on a piece of paper declaration of war against coronavirus i'd conscript every man woman and child under the age of 40 and i'd say your work orders are to go back to work one in a thousand of you are going to die but yeah 24 million soldiers died in world war 2 and less economic damage was imposed on the world <laughs> than in world war 2 mm. believe it or not uh, so mm. the economic mm. damage of corona in only a few months has done as much economic damage as world war 2 obviously and you, can, and you can't unwind it right because uh the backs that you know the attempt to backstop this whatever with i don't know i heard some kind of numbers it needs like 40 50 bi- trillion of dollars to backstop this whole mess there in you know this debt monetized debt uh, thing so um yeah uh, so uh, so obviously uh, you know there's not as much death as world war 2 which you know 80 90 million uh, all in mm-hmm. uh but apparently if you if you believe the experts if they say we went unmitigated and went for the herd immunity uh method that you know we might lose 70 to 80 million people uh worldwide so instead of getting the soldiers on the front that had extremely low mortality rates yeah and you know yeah. keep keep the 50s 60s Bro, 70s and 100%. 80s at home for a few months uh you know go from there if you live with the elderly 100%. stay home uh other than that we've we've really we've nuked the economy uh ubi is popping up everywhere and like i said you're not going to kick up a stink if you're on ubi mm. like the best way to put someone down and keep them compliant is paying them ubi keeping them out of work and well, giving that, them that's a, a, that's another wage. drug Yeah. That's another drug. That that's another way to avoid a little bit of pain, you know? It's you give them this fucking mild drug which is now called UBI. So we've got an economic drug to fucking keep everyone docile enough so that like we have literally like what what you just said then has just fucking nailed it. We we've literally in a bid to protect a few fucking um and, and this might sound cold so I apologize to old people but to to protect some old people who are you know technically the most um susceptible to this we have literally destroyed the future of all the young people mm. like how the fuck has the world become so backwards where you know the the older generation doesn't have the balls or the fucking courage to um to look out for the younger generations like that fuck they don't even sick. have to have courage not- stay at home just let the rest of us go and if we happen to live with elderly we stay home as well or if uh or if we have like if we are morbidly obese uh, we stay at home uh, or or if we have emphysema we stay at home but everyone else go back go out and do your thing i don't know but that's what i mean might yeah. die but that's what that's what i mean that's what i mean so like it it, it barely fucking requires any courage it barely requires balls but for their for for their fucking fear of oh you know this invisible bug might fucking get me um we've literally like society has come together and not just, just that not just of, that um, every politician wants to be able to go up on the election trail uh, next election wherever you are put their hand on my heart and say only 10,000 people died we could have been looking at a million yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. and you know 
another psyop to say, okay, we, we're doing this for the old people. And then everyone said, okay, I'm feeling for them. But actually what is like really happening is, uh, you know, my mom just told me that they're like getting rid of the benches so the old people cannot go out and sit in the sun. We know that the sun is super like beneficial to them. I heard that they had to sign like some document that they don't get treatment in a hospital, which is, which is like super turned around. And someone in a Bitcoin scene said that they couldn't go to their elderly like uh, family members to give them food because they were quarantined. Then so many elderly are suffering because they cannot see their family members. So they're suffering from mental issues. So it is so much happening against these people through this quarantine that this whole thing actually doesn't make sense. On the other side, we could say, okay, we're, tr we're like work really working on improving the immune system of all people and especially the old, old people to give them good food, um, to provide clean air for everyone, clean water, not feed them with all the like, yeah, they don't get good food in these like elderly, elderly homes. Mm -hmm. And um, they are, um, the, so you could improve like many things there. They get like all these like drugs that are, I wouldn't say not beneficial to them. Maybe someday definitely need it, but it's again, symptoms related. So they're actually like treated like really bad. And now we're saying, oh, we're doing this for, for the elderly. It's so twisted around. So this whole thing doesn't make sense. Well, I, I think that's one of the, um, the ramifications of an attempt by, because well, I guess, yeah, maybe blanket blaming the old people is, you know, is not the right thing to do here. It's like, um, you know, there's, there's, um, it, it's, it's a function of that layer of society being generally the ones that are, um, you know, that are pulling the strings and they're the ones who, um, who have in their, in their fear of saving their own skins have actually, you know, killed the rest of their people in their generation because now the ramifications of keeping, um, of stopping an economy and keeping those who are able to work is that, you know, the support infrastructure for everybody else actually falls apart as well. Oh, well so th th this is one of those. With that, you say that the elderly would have said it, but it was the politicians who said that. I don't know, like the elderly going to a poll and say, yeah, I want this. Right. Oh, the politicians are elderly. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's the politicians being the fucking elderly. So, so it's, it's that generation. Uh, so, so I guess I'm giving the generation like a blanket um, thing. So, so I don't mean every single elderly person, you know, obviously not. But um, I mean, I kind of felt like that a little bit earlier today, though, <laughs> with that old bag telling me off. <laughs> but anyway, that's um, ah, uh, yeah. I think I think, I think the elderly, yeah, the yeah, the elderly would be better served if the if the under forties uh, went back to work. Now I say forty as an arbitrary number. I don't know enough about the world stats. Uh, but in Australia, we haven't had many deaths, nor many cases. We pretty much got away with it in Australia. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the youngest person to die was 55. 55 year old male with comorbidities. Yep. Uh, but the yeah. majority have been men in their 80s. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, yeah. I, I just, it's, it's, um, it's, def look, man, there is a high probability I fucking had the shit in, um, in Feb and didn't know. Um, cause I didn't get tested. I was just sick for fucking, I, I, and I never get sick. Like one thing I've done my entire life, well, particularly since I was 18, since I moved out on my own is just build my immune system. Mm. And as the vitamin result, C, yeah. Bro, and other vitamin C, vitamin A, sun, D, K, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like training, eating good, eating organic. Like I, I've been practicing that. Like this is another one of those divergences in thinking, right? Is that people think today that, Oh yeah, you know, it's okay. You know, medicine will fix me or drugs will fix me or whatever. It's, it, as opposed to building a solid immune system. Like, you know, people are dependent basically on drugs, medicines and vaccines um, to survive. Whereas I'm not dependent on any of that shit. I haven't taken a fucking Panadol for at least 16 years. So I've never taken, I've not taken a painkiller. I've not taken, um, any form of, um, you know, vaccine or drug or fucking medicine or anything for since, since I moved out on my own and I've never had a fucking problem. 
Um, you know, yeah, I might have been hit by like sort of a man flu a couple of times over the years. But what I do, my, my cure for man flu is ginger, lemon, mm-hmm. um, tea, and I put on fucking 10 layers of clothing and go to bed and just basically force myself to sweat it out, get a fever for a couple of days and I'm done. I'm good. Yeah, I got that ginger and lemongrass. See, as we bro, speak. It's the bomb. That, that's that's, that's <laughs> how is. you solve this shit. That's how you fix this. Yeah. You know, so you build immunity. You don't you don't you mm. don't throw away your fucking immunity for um for you know some bullshit excuse. So again, that that's just one of those derangement syndromes of um of the of the fiat world that we live in. Which is unfortunate. Uh, so I was actually diagnosed of like unhealable illnesses, not like great ones, but smaller ones, I'd say. And I had to like take pills. And uh, mm-hmm. then I did my research and realized that the causes are actually because of uh, toxi- toxins, for example, mercury. And so I stopped yep, all yep, that yep. and I did a great detox. I did a lot of meditation to get rid of the stress. That was actually quite crucial for me in my particular mm-hmm. case. And I'm not taking anything anymore. So this but, uh, whole thing was a lie that it's unhealable. It's gone. Everything. It is. Gone. Yeah, yeah. I had asthma when I was a kid. I don't have asthma anymore. Yeah, um, me too. I, I swam out of it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's exactly See? what I did, dude. In the ocean. I had asthma and I swam out of fucking um, asthma by running and swimming in the ocean. So cool. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so that's... Sorry, Kev, we kind of hijacked and... No, no, but it's really important to, to talk podcast. about. <laughs> yeah, no, because I'm a friend, you know, I'm a huge advocate of, of, of risk minimization, but actually what, you know, what's being done is actually uh, maximizing the damages, you know, and yeah. uh, people don't question anything. They don't educate themselves. So that's, you know, the, what this podcast is also for, to educate not only about Bitcoin, but about, you know, the bigger picture uh, around and within Bitcoin. So um it's a holistic approach, but, you know, I mean, you said previously, uh, Alex, that, yeah, people need, uh, you know, to, to feel that pain because we've, mm-hmm. sort of, you know, we've, but people have different paths and roads to that. Some, you know, go on psychedelics if they have the courage to take that psychedelic, you know what I'm saying? So, or either go on, on a world trip and, you know, have, have, a, have their own experiences, but it needs some kind of a trigger. And maybe, maybe this whole Corona shit is going to, uh, you know, unfold some processes uh, within these, you know, fucked up structures so people wake up and really feel the pain, existential pain, monetary, financial, economical pain, health, you know, whatever that is, but they need some kind of inspiration, some kind of trigger point. And that's what maybe it's been missing until now. Well, I mean, look, it's never missing. It's just always come in waves. So like, you know, I I think this, this is a more visible one for the world. And like, like we said, um, you know, it's going to have a different reaction on different people. Some people are going to take this as an opportunity to, you know, wake the fuck up and look for things that are, um, that are associated with, uh, personal sufficiency and personal sovereignty or whatever we want to label that as. And one of the things they'll find on that journey is Bitcoin. Um, but you know, unfortunately a big chunk of the people are going to go to what's more comfortable. They're going to take another drug. They're going to take some more Prozac. They're going to get their UBI. They're going to, you know, get chipped. They're going to bend over for the government and, you know, that's what they're going to do. And then the next catastrophe um, is going to be even bigger, you know, five, 10 years from now. And then those guys who bent over for the government at that point in time are going to realize, you know, m- maybe a subset of those are going to realize, holy fucking shit, we really did make the wrong decision. Um, and, you know, with a bit of luck, it won't be too late for all of them to decide to unchip themselves, stop bending over, stop taking Prozac. Um, and hopefully during that period, um, you know, those of us with a brain um, who are able to be self-sufficient and, you know, start, you know, ma- manage a life that doesn't depend, that doesn't have all of these dependencies, we're able to be strong enough, loud enough um, and broad enough that we can, um, we can be an example for, uh, you know, the, the benefits of a contrarian viewpoint. Um, and what, what, what I feel like is that we, we need a couple waves of pain. I, I honestly don't think Corona is the big one. I really, really don't think Corona is like, I, I think that there's a much bigger catastrophe around the corner. Um, and when I say around the corner, like probably five, 10 years from now, I think that, you know, I'm kind of with Dita Bob here is that I think they will print their way out of this. Um, and in a year or two, you know, stock markets and everything are going to be fucking higher than ever, but main street, the real, real economy the real market 
it's going to be a fucking disaster and there's going to be people like bread lines and all this sort of shit, but they're going to appease them for as long as they can through UBI um, until something else fucking breaks down. And whether that next breakdown is going to be economic or biological in nature or, you know, electromagnetic in nature or something, but the next time around, um, you know, when the UBI check can't pay for anything, for example, or whatever, that's when those people are going to start to fucking freak out. And again, hopefully, um, you know, we will be, you know, those of us with a brain will be enough of an example to inspire others to come to sort of our side of the equation. Um, and I just hope that it just doesn't turn into a fucking zombie apocalypse where they come and try to take our shit. And this is where we need some defense. <laughs> we need, we need some walls and some guns and some, um, some drones and some fucking whatever else to like make sure that, um, our shit doesn't get taken. Yeah, well, yeah. in America, you can uh, you can literally buy anti-tank weaponry. So uh, I love it. I love but, it. You know, uh, it might not be the no. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. America is a good candidate. If you have anti-tank weaponry, it's uh, you you should feel quite safe. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, need, yeah. Fuck yeah. Off. Well, Alex, you you answered actually my question, which I um, which I want to ask you, like, how far can the system? fiat system whatever central banks government extend this like balloon like this debt bubble and this whole you know insane psychopathic system i mean how you you said it, i think like you said like one or two years right so they can, oh no i think much longer i think much, much longer, longer. I, yeah oh. i reckon we got another decade in it oh, wow. that's my gut feel okay. but look it, it just gives us time because we need to strengthen man we're not ready mm -hmm. for this shit Mm -hmm. yet i mean imagine if the fabric of society breaks down now we haven't developed our own you know supply chains none of us are fucking ready for this shit like you know i mean i've got i've got an entire list of skills that i want, want to develop including flying including um you know planting including working with older electronics including um you know programming and all this sort of stuff so i'm, I'm gonna like i i maybe i'm biased but i hope you know the breakdown of society doesn't happen for another five or ten years um because, you know, I've got a lot of stuff to get ready um, to prepare for that. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't think we're fundamentally, re like if we think of Bitcoin as Noah's Ark and the whole place is going to flood, um, you know, Noah's Ark is at the moment just a little fucking, you know, a dinghy at the moment. It's, it's, um, it's just not ready. Like it's a, it's a plank of wood at this point in time. So yes, it can sail, but it ain't going to carry much of us. Um, and we're out there saying, you know, we'll probably all die anyway, because it's just not, the, the arc is not ready. Uh, I think we need more time and the, the, we're, we're going to be granted that time because uh, this, this Ponzi, this house of cards um, hasn't blown over yet. And they're going to they're keep the Ponzi going um, for a little while longer. I, I honestly think they will. Um, it's just, UBI is just too good a solution for most of these idiots. Um, so, you know, you, you're going to keep the main street appeased and honestly let's just look at this objectively they'll introduce ubi they'll introduce enough to keep everyone just you know mildly uh they'll, they'll keep them off the um the revolution line so they'll just keep them mildly appeased whilst at the same time all of that extra money has to flood into assets somewhere and it's going to pump the stock market it's going to pump all of these fucking assets up including bitcoin obviously mm -hmm. then they're going to turn around and they're going to say hey look everyone's happy everyone's got a check and the stock market and the economy is booming and GDP is up and all this bull, all these bullshit metrics that don't fucking mean anything are up. So they're going to run that fucking Ponzi one more time. Um, and you know, the, the, they'll run that narrative for as long as they can until people realize, like until that gap widens so much that, um, you know, the, the $1,200 in UBI that you're getting or whatever the fuck you're getting just literally can't sustain you. Um, and, you know, the, 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 they basically wasted the bullet of this narrative this time around. I, I, I'm not sure what the next bullet's going to be or if there is another bullet. And that's why I think that, you know, another, it, it'll take another five, 10 years. But, um, you know, this, this thing is going to fall apart. It's just, it's, I, I just don't think it's now. Mm hmm and since you're the yeah. CEO of, of Amber, um, let me just on the positive. I mean, I do and many others. I mean, you can read it on Twitter. More and more people are observing 
people are like who have, have haven't had any contact for years. They're now calling me <laughs> and asking me, mm -hmm. you know, should they? Isn't it too late? Or can, should they buy? You know, some kind of fucking shit coin? Or isn't it too late? Or you know, I just tell them, you know, stack sats or whatever, and and buy a, you know at least a small portion, and then learn, educate yourself, go into action first, and then educate yourself. And uh, so, do, do you are you observing this more and more in your environment? Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. I was about to tweet out today, like. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm on a crusade and the crusade's never going to stop. Um, and, you know, whether that's via my um, vehicle called Amber or whether that's through my writing, whether that's through my shit posting on Twitter, whatever, uh, th this is what I'm living and dying for. And I'm going to continue that process. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm very, 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 very close to solving the euro launch problem for amber so cool. kev like we'll be here yep. very fucking shortly i can tell yep. you that much mm -hmm. um and yeah man like I'm, I'm seeing more people reach out and ask me the question of um you know where how and you know uh, i'm able to point them in you know in the right directions so 100 percent. Has you were gonna say something um before no I can't remember okay. now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, fantastic. So I'm going to wrap this up. Any final thoughts uh, has Stephanie? Uh, oh, yeah, it's... actually, now I remember what I was going to say. I reckon, uh, yeah, this can can be kicked easy another five to 10 years. So don't yeah. be surprised to see uh, uh, unemployment at 40%, the Dow at 40,000. Yep, yep, and yep. Uh, and uh, the central banks, uh, the Fed's balance sheet at around 20 trillion. Yeah, so, no, uh, I I hundred percent agree with you. Minimum, I I hundred percent yeah. agree with you, bro. Um, I I think too many people are calling for you know the end of times right now. I just don't think that's going to happen, man. It's um, there's too much fake money floating around, and um, yeah. and like you said, they're going to appease enough people um with UBI that yeah we'll have ridiculous unemployment and we'll have the Dow at fucking record. It's not going to be tomorrow. I think you know, forty thousand in the Dow is probably going to be you know. Uh, two three years away um but yeah man, oh, it, it's not it's not it's not much it's only 30 percent up from from all-time high yeah true but i i think this washout still has a little while to go because what you're going to see is um initially um some data come out that um is gonna uh, you know like f for example the pmis and everything in europe came like if you're over 50 on the PMI, it means you're growing. If you're under 50, it means you're contracting. And the PMIs came in lowest in history, obviously, for um for March. You know, like fucking between 20 valid. and 30 from yeah, all so, valid. So, but this week was the greatest week on Wall Street in 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was since 1936, so almost 100 years actually. But yeah, Some, um, something like that. So look, I, th but that that's just the that's just the uh, mean reversion. That's just the fucking bounce. So I think we're gonna have um, you know m much lower to go before we go higher. But my my gut feel is that um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably see the Dow back to like you know between twelve to fifteen before over the next couple of years we see the Dow at forty. But like like you said, what's gonna happen is the the system is gonna hollow itself out. So that that side of things, Wall Street is gonna be richer than ever on paper. But Main Street is going to be poorer than ever on paper because everyone's oh, sorry. Wall Street's going to be richer than ever on paper, but Main Street's going to be richer, poorer than ever in reality, and that's where that fucking contrast is. Um, and yeah, with, with a bit of luck, um, I don't know that that may be enough to spark a revolution at some stage you know, in the next in the next decade. One 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 would hope. Yeah. Do you see a civil war in? I mean. Maybe in the states. That's that's the most realistic Africa, scenario. Africa, yeah. Uh, no, Africa? no, Africa. Yeah, yeah. A couple mm -hmm. of if if it catches proper fire in, uh, I don't know. Let's say just somewhere unstable like Congo, uh, and you know the economy broke down. Uh, I could I could see like strife uh, happening. Uh, I think in the in the developed world. You know, also, also Latin America, a couple of the more like unstable South American uh, nations. Uh, if Corona catches fire and there's lockdowns and all that kind of stuff, you could see uh, quite a bit of unrest. But the, the West now, 
is two to three weeks ahead of South America and Africa in terms of when the epidemic started. Uh, oh, so got a they're bit not, further. A bit three th weeks. Maybe a month behind us then in that case. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, either maybe it's for a lack of testing or something, but it just doesn't seem to be catching, you know, there's only 13,000 cases in all of Africa. All the, all the African countries have cases except uh, Somaliland and Lesotho. Yeah, uh, I saw a meme. I saw a meme the other <laughs> the other week, which was <laughs> someone's like, you know, uh, the dictator of an African country goes, "We've had no cases." <laughs> it's like, why? Well, we have no testing kits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 so, again, if if it if it catches fire, in you know, like there's there's maybe only fifty countries out of the world's you know two hundred countries or whatever that have adequate hospital infrastructure that could that could handle something like this. So the fact that uh, the, all those undeveloped nations haven't experienced that many cases has been, has been a blessing uh, because if they do start to develop cases and it does start catching fire, yeah, uh, but the, we you know walk, what? There's, there's, also, into a, there's also a chance that those nations don't really give a fuck because they've got bigger problems to deal with like, you know, Ebola, malaria and actual real diseases, not the fucking flu. So chances are like, you know, they're, they're actually probably, physically a lot more capable of dealing with this shit anyway. Um, yeah, and so, they so, are bottom heavy populations as well. Yeah. They're very, yeah, very exactly. young populations. Okay. Young. So who exactly. knows? So All I, I can... Yeah. I just yeah, hope I, it I doesn't catch it'll fire. Hit hard enough. Yeah. Look, I, I think what Kev was maybe more referring to is like, you know, will, will there be a revolution, you know, via a civil war in something more developed? Kev, correct me if I'm wrong there. Yeah. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah. yeah. Cause, because I, I would say that you know civil war and revolutions and all that sort of shit, whether Corona exists or not, um, is probably a norm in a lot of these, um, you yeah. know, African slash Latin American countries anyway. So I, I think, you know, what's what's going to push um, people to rally together and you know fight in the in the developed countries? I don't know if anything at this point because I think, um, you know, th the the methods of attack are so potentially violent that um i think deterrence is um you know is kind of the the position as opposed to actual attack um so i wonder yeah i, I, don't, I don't know if actual traditional warfare like what we saw in world war Two and vietnam and everything like that is actually the, the way forward and i just don't think i think it's just um too violence is now potentially too visible mm -hmm. for that kind of thing to happen um, unless, unless society literally breaks down. So I recommend everyone have a read of that one second after, because it just, it kind of is a good expose on, um, on, you know, if you do remove basic things like communication and power, then we would definitely, definitely, definitely go into a mode of like civil war and, you know, fucking end of world kind of times. But like if, if communication, the internet and, um, electricity and like the grid and all that sort of stuff remains, I think it's probably... Yeah, war, like a, a violent type war is probably not, in my mind, you know, realistic. But hey, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I see it the same way. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Stephanie, do um, you have any final thoughts before we wrap this up? Well, I was always thinking about the concept of private cities that uh, self, uh, have self-sovereign uh, government or kind of organize themselves by the people. And um, is there like any projects that are really putting this into place yet? I, 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 heard, uh, I heard Jeffrey Epstein is selling his island. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, I knew he's alive. I, I, I put in a bid, bro. I put in a bid. <laughs> It got rejected because they don't accept Bitcoin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God, he's still oh, not shit. dead. Oh. Um, do you know what? Um, to answer your question, um, Steph, I, I um, the uh, who was that guy? Actually, Moritz um, mentioned his name to me, and then he was on um, he was on Stefan Levera's podcast. Uh, is that German dude doing the the private cities? Um, I think he. 
Is that this yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So th there's, there's. I know that stuff's happening. Um, I've, I've got a contact to the guy who's doing Liberland. Um, and then I'm, I'm working on some stuff myself. Um, that uh, much too early to, you know, really discuss yet. But um, I'm trying to set up something. Um, w one thing on an island, and one thing in a. A, in a location in what's currently a, a, a fucking backwards ex-socialist country that um, has some really rich soil, a beautiful lake, and very, very many mountains. Um, so it's a really rough terrain to um, to kind of, you know, attack. So, so I'm trying to do some stuff in those locations um, mm. that hopefully will come to fruition in the next five to ten years. Um, so it's it's, I think these kind of like the, the whole concept of a private city is, is like a longer term mm -hmm. project anyway it's not something that we can whip up tomorrow unless we chuck a frank braun and deck out a um uh a container <laughs> just <laughs> drop it in the middle of somewhere uh, which i don't think is useful for anything more than just a couple people but um yeah i'd, I'd, I'd be happy to explore some of those ideas with you at some stage yeah, cool. exciting wow <laughs> awesome with, with all of you guys actually yeah yeah, looking forward to that. Hess, what's your final words of wisdom? Uh, hoard Bitcoin. Yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, in times like this, it's the only thing worth hoarding. <laughs> yeah, That's what we need. Something like always when you're like mad at the government, buy Bitcoin. Yep. That's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. I swear to God, when that fucking old lady pissed me off earlier today, the first thing I thought of was walking back inside and buying some more Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing I thought of, I was like, "Fuck you! I'm buying some Bitcoin now." Yeah, no, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I'm buying Bitcoin ten times daily these days. Beautiful. Yeah. So uh, almost every odd hour. <laughs> so I'm buying at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 7 p.m., all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm really going max, uh, max exposure. Yeah, it's this been is, fluctuating is... pretty weird lately. Like yesterday went down to I don't know, in euro. I don't know. It's like six six thousand two hundred, and then went up again. So it's good oh, when times you're buying buy. every two hours, it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, guys, I really, really enjoyed our talk and hope to, yeah, have you back soon. Maybe, you know, go a little bit deeper into the rabbit hole. And thank you so much. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, Stay guys. Stay safe. Thanks, Stay guys. Healthy. Take care. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye-bye. Hey, so hope you really loved uh, this amazing, fantastic, really conscious expanding talk with um, Stephanie von Jan, Alex Svetsky and S. McCook. Uh, we really went deep into the rabbit hole. We're going to repeat this as often as possible. And um, yeah, you know, um, really uh, absorb, digest everything we said. Uh, please uh, do me a favor, uh, share this video. I'm sorry, by the way, that we, you know, did a lot of swearing, but it's just that the way we talk, especially with Alex and S. McCook, it's just natural, authentic. So, of course, just, you know, in case you want to send it to any, you know, uh, younger people under age or whatever, or people who are more sensitive to this kind of uh, vulgar or, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> or, you know, swearing language. Um, sorry about that, but that's the way we talk. Um, and, yeah, um, Please uh, leave me a positive review if you can, share, retweet it, follow me, and also Hess, McCook, um, Stephanie von Jan, Alex Vetsky, make sure you, you follow them, and uh, really, especially Alex Vetsky with his Amber platform and uh, the editor uh, of um, Bitcoin Times. He writes excellent articles, um, also Stephanie and Hess, all of them, they just, you know, they're all unique and individual um, uh, geniuses in their you know, uh, with all their skills and talents and knowledge and um, comprehension level. And yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, leave me a positive review. And um, if you have any questions, if you have any wishes, desires, whom I can, should, you know, whom I should get on next time on my podcast show, uh, my Total Connector show and the Total Bitcoin podcast show, let me know. Thank you so much for support and for listening and uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, talk to you soon.